When I open the Worksheet tab marked Land, the screen initially looks like this. Firstly, the DVM has taken the site value I specified on the project sheet into cell B7 of the land sheet. And using the table of land transaction tax rates to the right of the page, has added the tax that would be payable on this price or value in cell B8, assuming that the land is bought in a single transaction. The DVM has also calculated the legal and surveyor's costs one would expect to be associated with the purchase of the site using the default rate of 1.5% that is set out on the project sheet. I can change any of the figures in the cells with a yellow background on this page and I can add other costs in rows 11 to 17 if I want to. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to leave things as they are. Note that before any of the data on this worksheet can be transferred to the cash flow and thus be included in my appraisal, I have to click the transfer button at the top of the sheet. The reason for this will be clear in a moment. DBM also has the facility to split the land purchase into more than one tranche which may be appropriate for larger strategic sites, for example. Let's suppose that my development site has split ownership, with one landowner selling me the land for the houses I'm going to build, and another owning the land on which I will build the flats. In this next screenshot, I have changed the entry in cell E6 to 2, and the DVM has opened up space on rows 23 and 24 for some further entries. Firstly, I must specify what value I'm attributing to the first tranche of land. The DVM will always put this part of the land value and the costs associated with it in month one of the cash flow. When I've done that, a counter in cell B21 tells me what balance of the total site value has still to be accounted for. In cell B24, I have attributed the balance of the total site value to my second tranche of land and I have linked that to Resi Element 2 by selecting that option in the drop-down menu behind cell C24. By default, the DVM would place this part of the total site cost in the cash flow three months before the building works for that element of the project begin. However, because I will have obtained planning consent for the whole scheme before I purchase any part of the site, I think I can narrow the gap between my drawdown of the second tranche of land and my start of building works in Resi Element 2 to just two months. So I've changed the default entry in D24 to two months. Before I transfer this data from the land sheet to my cash flow, I save the file as before and then click the transfer button at the top of the page. When I do that, the DVM pulls up the dialog box you can see on the screen, asking whether or not my transactions are linked for LTT purposes. By default, the DVM will treat my transactions as linked transactions, as they probably would be if the land all belonged to one owner. But in this case, my second landowner has no association with the principal landowner, so I want to specify that the transactions are not linked by clicking No in the dialog box. This will reduce my LTT liability. So before I do that, note the LTT liability that the DVM has calculated in cell B8 on the default assumption that my transactions will be linked and note now how the LTT liability has reduced because the transactions are not linked. At this point, the DVM has transferred the data up from my land worksheet to the cash flow, splitting the total land costs into the two subtotals that are highlighted by the green arrow on this screenshot. We now move on to specifying all the other development costs in my project. The Costs Worksheet is where we specify all the other costs that we haven't already dealt with. The first category of costs is Community Infrastructure. 
The headings in column A here are prompts or suggestions for the sort of Section 106 obligations that you might need to consider. They can be overwritten with other headings if they don't apply, and it is better to overtype any headings that you aren't going to use rather than to add new headings below ones that are already there but which won't be used. The cost relating to some Section 106 obligations may be based on a rate per dwelling and you can use the DVM to calculate those by entering a figure in column E on rows 5, 6 and 7. Equally, you could insert a total figure in column B without using the cells in column E. There is space down the right-hand side of the page where you can make notes, explaining, for example, how your figure in column B was calculated. Note that in column G there is a facility to determine the months in which these costs will appear in your cash flow. The choice for community infrastructure is between linking each item to the build cost profile or to the sales profile or entering the costs as a single payment in a specified month of the cash flow. If you choose the last of these options, the DVM will prompt you to specify which month by moving your cursor to column H. To help with the choices that you need to make here, the DVM notes the months when build costs and sales revenues start and finish at the top of the page, as highlighted by the green arrow on this screenshot. For all other cost headings on the worksheet, the default setting in column G links them to build costs, but you can vary this as I will explain in a moment. Moving down to normal site costs, we see two mandatory entry rows. The first of these is external site costs, which the DVM had initially calculated for me by using the 15% of build costs rate that is the default setting on the project sheet. This produced a figure that I thought was too low, so I have entered £2 million in B27. Looking back at E27, the, you can see that the DVM has recalculated that cell to show that my £2 million corresponds to just over 20% of build or plot costs, which I consider more appropriate for this development. Row 28 here is designed to pick up costs arising from Welsh building regulations that may not have been included in the build cost rate you specified on the resi element sheets. Currently, this might be costs relating to sprinklers and a ULEV charging point, which won't be reflected in BCIS data published for the UK as a whole. I have inserted an allowance of £3,250 per dwelling for this in E28, and the DVM has calculated the corresponding total cost in B28. On row 26, I have inserted an allowance for initial site preparation works. In this case, the demolition, say, of a small group of buildings that are currently on site. Note that because this cost will occur at the outset of my development, I have chosen not to link this to other build costs in my cash flow, but instead have entered 2 in column H and 2 in column I. This will then divide the total cost of £40,000 between months 2 and 3 in my cash flow prior to the main build costs for my first resi element, which start in month 4. The DVM has automatically changed the entry in G26, which is a protected cell, to show that this cost item is no longer linked to other build costs in my cash flow. At point 5 on your screen, I have added the cost of a primary estate road to serve my development, with a note of how I calculated that cost on the right of your screen. I have also chosen to spread this cost over 15 months starting in month three of my cash flow, rather than use the default link to other build costs. Other costs relating to minor access roads within my development are covered by the allowance I made on road 27 for external site costs. Scrolling down the costs worksheet, 
I come to a variety of other cost headings. Some of these, like abnormal site costs, may not be relevant to your project. They aren't to mine, so I take, make no entry here. However, this screenshot shows how the default settings on the project sheet allow the DVM to automatically calculate the cost allowance for fees and the contingency sum based on the build and other costs that I have specified in creating my appraisal. The same applies with marketing and sale costs on rows 70 to 82, where you will see that I have added an allowance for marketing costs, which in this case could include an on-site sales office and show homes at row 72. You can overwrite any of the figures in column B if you want. Should you do so, the DVM will blank the entry in column E on that row to show that the default percentage is no longer being used. To restore the default, simply re-enter the percentage that was in column E or column F and the DVM recalculates the cost in column B. If you prefer, you can enter a different percentage in column E or column F and the DVM will recalculate the costs in column B accordingly. That's all on costs. We're now ready to look at the appraisal we've created and the cash flow projection that's associated with that.